Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to Kanu's episode 46 about Atlas and Muas 5. Launching in its biggest configuration, flown to date, Atlas can carry up to 9 metric tons to a geosynchronous transfer orbit using its liquid fueled core booster and 5 solid rocket motors. What's special about these is they are arranged in an asymmetrical fashion with 2 on one side and 3 on the other. Its main engine, which is a Russian RD-180, can compensate for the off-center thrust and even launch with only a single booster. This by the way will happen later this year and I'm really looking forward to that. The majority of the upper half of Atlas V is covered with a giant 5 meter wide fairing and consists of the center upper stage and the almost 7 ton heavy payload. The rocket will lift off from Cape Canaveral, Florida and the launch window opens at 14.30 UTC on June 24th. Having cleared the tower, Atlas will begin its yaw and pitch program, following a so-called ballistic arc to a geosynchronous transfer orbit. Such an arc is important because it allows the rocket to use as little control input as possible. A ball shot for example follows such an arc too, which is a typical task one has to calculate in school. The main difference is a ball only has its initial velocity, which consists of a portion going up and one to the side. In an ideal case without air resistance, the velocity to the side will not change and gravity only acts on the up velocity. So if one wanted to calculate the distance such an object will fly, it is only necessary to calculate the time it takes for the up and down motion to reach the ground. This time can then be used independently to calculate how far the side velocity has taken the ball. Now the key difference between this and a rocket is, the velocity changes during flight because the boosters are firing. This means the guidance system has to constantly update its trajectory and if it deviates from the planned one, it has to apply some control inputs until both match again. The perfect case is of course when no inputs are needed, since every time a rocket has to steer, it loses some thrust it would have else used to go forward. Having jettisoned its boosters, Atlas will go full thrust again and fire for a few more seconds before it separates from the fairing and stages its bottom core booster to release the upper stage with a payload. The satellite belongs to the Mobile User Objective System or MUOS for short. It is the fifth of its kind and I covered MUOS 4 in a previous episode and as mentioned there the system will be used by the military as a replacement for the older Ultra High Frequency Follow On System or UFO for short. It's basically a satellite based mobile phone network which makes ground troops independent from ground coverage. While many people think smartphones receive their signal from satellites as well, it is actually quite different. Communication antennas are distributed all over the ground and if you look carefully you will find them everywhere. They are sometimes mounted on buildings or stand tall on little hills. The closer you are to such an antenna, the better the reception and there are of course different types. Antennas in crowded areas like cities for example need much more bandwidth than those at countrysides. This is mainly done to save energy because an antenna radiates energy no matter if you use it or not. If there is no antenna close by, you will also have no reception at all and that is especially the case in crisis areas where the military operates. The MUA satellites can work on their own and only act as a relay to ground stations, which then process the calls. There are four of these and they are located all around the globe with one in each Hawaii, Australia, Italy and of course the US. The satellite constellation consists of four satellites as well, but one is sent up as a backup. I'm not entirely sure about it, but Muas 5 should be such a backup placed near the one over India. Since the upper stage can lift 9 tons to a geosynchronous transfer orbit, it will have a little spare performance left and use it to give the satellite an additional push after a 2 hour long coasting phase, separating it at an orbit of 3700 by 36000 km. From there the satellite will use its own engine to circleize its orbit as most communication satellites do. Now in the end a little shout out to my Patreon, thanks a lot. Just by the way, there is only one week left to support June and since the next launch is in July your name could be here in the next episode already. However, I'm working on a KNU special and I am not yet sure if I will release it in June or July. Ok, that was KNU's episode 46 about Atlas V and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.